All praise it to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Romans 5 verse 18. Understanding Romans 5 verse 18. Okay, let's read that. Romans 5 verse 18. Let's jump right into it. Okay. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteous of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Is this so, and even so, meaning the same way, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So we're going to go over this, this verse right here. Okay, there's a lot in it. So pay close attention, take notes, take notes, take notes. Okay, let's unpack it now. Read verse 18 one more again. Okay. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 18. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the one offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even okay. so. So it says, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. The apostle Paul is writing to the children of Israel scattered in Rome. That's what we need to understand here. Okay. But before we deal with that, watch this. Jump up to verse 12. So we understand when it says, by one, Judgment by one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Okay, jump up. Let's see who is that one that judgment came upon all men to condemnation because of this one. Jump up to verse 12. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world Come and on. death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for for that all have sinned you see what he's saying he says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin because now death came through sin because of this one man you understand in his door death passed upon all men for that all have sinned because through what through this one man watch this all that give me second as chapter 7 verse 48 Let's find out who this one man is. So the Apostle Paul in verse 12, he's saying the same thing in verse 18. He's just using, he's just using different words, but he's explaining the same thing. He's talking about that one man that we're reading about in verse 12. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 48. Let's read that. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 7, verses 48. Mm -hmm. O thou Adam, o thou who? what hast thou done? O thou Adam. O thou Adam. O thou Adam. Come on. So Adam is the subject matter here. Go forth. Go ahead. O thou Adam. What hast thou done? What did you do? Thou, what, has you, what have you done? What did you do, Adam? Go ahead. For though it was thou that sinned, mm -hmm. thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. You see what he's saying? He says, oh, Adam, what have you done? Because though it was you that sinned, now he says, thou art not fallen or no. Meaning what? You are not affected. But you are not the only one that is affected by this thing. Okay? But we all that come of thee. So all of us that come from your lineage, Adam, we are now, we, have to, we are painted with the same brush. That's what Ezra is saying. He's complaining about this thing because of what happened in the garden. Okay? So go back. Romans 5, verse 12 again. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see that thing? So now there's one man that we're reading about here. It's talking about our forefather, Adam. Okay? Because Adam was given the commandments. And when Adam was given the commandments, what did he do? He transgressed those commandments. Okay, hold this. Give me, go back to Second Esdras. Go back to Second Esdras now, chapter 3. Second Esdras, chapter 3. Let's start at verse, start at verse 4. Second Esdras 3, verse 4. Because what the Apostle Paul is explaining is explaining that death came into the world through sin. You understand? So through Adam, sin was introduced because of what our foremother Eve did. Okay, read that. Second Esdras 3, verse 4. Come on. Second book of Esdras, chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest 
at the beginning In when Genesis, thou didst. He says, thou speakest at the beginning, Genesis. Go ahead. When thou didst plant the earth and that thyself alone and commandest the people. He commanded the people, he gave them the law through who? Adam. Go ahead. And gave us the body unto Adam without soul. Right. Which was the workmanship of thine hands. Mm -hmm. And did breathe into him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. So our forefather Adam was given God's commandments. He was given God's laws. So what did he do? He says he was given what? The breath of life and he was made living before thee. This is Genesis 2 verse 7. Let's get that real quick. Genesis 2 verse 7. Okay. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So Adam was given the commandments, the breath of life. And he became a living soul. The only time when the most High God acknowledges us to be alive is when we keep his commandments. Okay, understand that. So let's go back. Second Esdras 3. Read verse 5 again. Second book of Esdras, chapter 3, verses 5. Read. And gave us the body unto Adam without soul, mm -hmm. which was the workmanship of thine hands. And didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. And man became a living soul. So Adam, our forefather, was given the commandments. Come on. And thou ledest him into paradise, mm -hmm. which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. So now our forefather Adam was given the kingdom. Okay, go ahead. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. You see that thing? In order for him to maintain the kingdom, the paradise, he was given the commandments to maintain that paradise, to maintain the kingdom of heaven on earth during his time. Go ahead. Which he transgressed and immediately what? thou which he transgressed. Which he transgressed. He broke those laws. You understand? Go ahead. Which immediately thou appointed death in him and his and generation. Immediately, and immediately thou appointed death in him. I need you to pay attention. Read verse 7 again. Second book of Ezra chapter 3, verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandments to love thy way which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. Now, I'm not going into now the future. You understand? The generations that came out of Adam. Okay, so let's go back. Romans chapter 5. Read verse 12 again. Romans 5 verse 12. Read that. The book of Romans. Chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see that thing, for all have sinned, meaning the tribes, the kindreds out of number. They also now, now we are affected by what, what? What Aram, our forefather, did. When we, we when he, when he, and our foremother Eve was in the garden, the garden of Eden, the kingdom that the Lord gave unto Adam to rule over all. You understand? Every bit of God's creation. Now jump down to verse 14. Remember, we're still explaining what we read in Romans 5, verse 18. Okay? Read verse 14. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Stop right there. It says, death reigned from Aram to Moses. We're going to explain that. Death reigned from Aram to Moses. From, from the time when Aram sinned in the garden through Eve, you understand? That's when death entered into the world. All the way up to Moses, our forefather. So does it mean that during the time of Moses, our forefather, people were not, was not dying? He's not saying that. I'm gonna, he's going to make it clear as we read on. Go ahead. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Meaning those that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression.
because Adam's transgression was a similitude. You understand? When Adam sinned, he, he committed what is called presumptuous sin. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was, what he was doing was wrong. You understand? Meaning pre, it's called presumptuous sin. He knew what, that what he was doing was wrong. He was not confused about what he was doing. So that's why it says, read that part again, even after the what? Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So those that have not sinned, you understand, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, because there were those men that have not sinned after Adam's after the similitude of Adam's transgressions. Enoch is one of them, you understand? Our forefathers, go ahead. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Do you see that part right there? Who is the figure of him that was to come? So Adam's transgression was a similitude for the figure of him that was to come. Hmm. That's beautiful right there. Watch this. Now let's back up. Okay, because we need to deal with, with what we just read when it says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Let's understand what that means. Get Genesis 3 verse 6. We read it earlier in 2nd Esther. But I just want to paint a picture so that everybody understand. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Okay. Genesis 3 verse 6. Let's read that. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So now when it says that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes, meaning beautiful to behold, the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, meaning of the tree and did eat. So our foremother Eve didn't eat an apple. She did not eat a banana. She did not eat grapes. You understand? So the fruit here, what he's talking about here, give me that in Hosea 10 verse 13 real quick. Let's see what is the fruit that our foremother eat ate. Our foremother Eve, Eve ate. Let's see what is the fruit that she ate. Okay. Was it a banana? Was it an apple? Let's see. Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Let's read that. The book of Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Come on. Ye have plowed wickedness. Mm -hmm. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. You have eaten the fruit of lies, philosophies. You understand that she brought to Adam. When she learned these philosophies, she brought those philosophies to Adam. What was those philosophies? Idolatry, worshiping of other gods. Okay, come on. Because thou didst trust in thy way, Mm -hmm. In the multitude of thy mighty men. The tree that was desired, Yannis, to make one wise. So go back to Genesis 3 now. Verse 6 once, more, once again. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, Come she on. took off the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Meaning he also learned of those philosophies that uh, our foremother Eve brought unto him. You understand? And our forefather Adam, he knew the law. He understood God's commandments. Like we read in 2nd Esther 3, verse 5 and 6. He understood that when he transgressed, that's when he, what? He learned those philosophies that he, his wife brought unto him. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Genesis of the three verse seven. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked mm -hmm. and they shook and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So now after they committed this sin, which is what? Idolatry, walking after other gods. He says the eyes of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. You understand? So it doesn't mean they were butt naked. This is a parable. This is a similitude. You understand? Give me that in Revelation 3 verse 18. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. Okay. He says they were what? They knew that they were naked. Their eyes were open. 
they knew that they was naked. It doesn't mean they were butt naked because they had clothes on already. Okay, watch this. Read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 18. Mm -hmm. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, Red. that thou mayest be rich, mm -hmm. and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That the what? And, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That the shame of your nakedness does not appear because they were clothed with, they were clothed with righteousness, Adam and Eve. They were clothed with God's laws. You understand? That's why it says white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness does not appear. You understand? So as soon as they learned of those philosophies, as soon as they went outside of God's commandments, guess what? The shame of their nakedness appeared, meaning what? They knew that they had sinned now. You understand? They were no longer covered with God's laws. Now they were covered with, they were covered with what? Sin. That's why it says the shame of your nakedness does not appear. Get that in, um, get that in Exodus 32, verse 24. Let's get that real quick. Okay. That the shame of your nakedness does not appear. What is that talking about? Read that. Exodus 32, read verse 24. This is an example when Moses came back from the mount and the, our forefathers and foremothers, they had created a golden calf for them to worship. Okay, watch this. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 32, verses 24. Mm -hmm. And I said unto them, whatsoever had any gold, let them no, no. break it off. Oh, yes, yes. Keep reading. Go ahead. So they gave it to me, they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and they came out as calves. You see, the way our the, the way Aaron is mentioning this is like it was like Shazam. It's like you see what he's saying? Is that then I cast it into the fire and they came out this calf. You see that? He got the gold, the earrings, and all that, and he threw them in the fire, and Shazam, a golden calf came out. That's how he's explaining it. <laughs> but they had to sit down and fashion this thing. Okay, go ahead. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. The people was what? That the people were naked. When our forefather Moses saw that the people was naked, go ahead, read. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. You see that thing? He made them naked unto their shame among their enemies because what was the shame? What was the shame of their nakedness? Sin, idolatry. Because now they decided to what? To fashion a golden calf for them to worship. They went into idolatry. So that's what we read in Revelation 3, 18. That's the same thing that we just read in Genesis 3, verse 7. So let's go back there. Genesis 3, verse 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. And the eyes of them both were opened. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they were naked. Right. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So they were hiding. They were hiding. They knew that they had sinned. You understand? Now they are ashamed. So now they are hiding. Okay. Watch this. Um, jump down to verse. Read, read verse 10. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he said. I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. You see that thing? That's what it means when it says, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. That's what it means. It says, he hid himself. So they were hiding. Now read verse 10 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I was, I mean, I had sinned and I hid myself. Like, like right now, our people, we break it. We, as a nation, we are in the midst of sin. So we are hiding among these nations. How are we hiding? We follow their customs and their laws. We want to be them. We want to be like them. You understand? We do the things that they do. We are hiding among them. Just like our forefather Adam did and our foremother Eve. They were hiding themselves. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 17 now. Okay. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 17. 
-hmm. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you listen and to your wife. Because you listen to your wife. Because the most said God, the reason why he's mad is because he gave Adam the law before he was ever created. You understand? Out of Adam's rib. The Lord dealt with Adam directly. So when Adam decided to listen to his wife, that was betrayal. You understand? You and I, we've been dealing so well together before this woman came. Now you decide you want to listen to your wife. You want to worship your wife more than me. You see that thing? So that's why the most I was mad. Okay? Read it again. Verse 17. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto mm -hmm. Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. You see that thing? In sorrow. Adam was commanded, Thou shalt not, in Genesis 2. He says, Thou shalt not eat of it. But he did it anyway, okay? Now the Lord says, Curse is the ground for your sake. Because you listen to your wife, you ate the fruit of the tree that I commanded thee. Don't touch that. Okay, go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Now you're going to catch hell, Adam. Because what? I gave you the law, statutes, and commandments. I gave you wisdom. I gave you the kingdom for you to rule over and to govern the whole planet Earth. So you decided to lose the whole kingdom, you understand, to govern the whole planet, and you decided to listen to your wife. Now watch this. Give me the book of 2 Ezra 7 verse 10. Okay, remember what we read. We read in the book of Romans that death, okay, that I'm paraphrasing it now, that the transgression, okay, it says, nevertheless, it says death reigned from Adam to Moses. So we're dealing with that part now. When it says death reigned from Adam to Moses, because what did Adam do for death to come into the world? He sinned. He listened to the voice of his wife, and then death a death entered into the world. You understand? So now we're dealing with that. So the, we, we're gonna, I'm going to show you what Adam was given. You understand? And then when he's saying death entered into the world, and now all those that come out, out, out of Adam, you understand, which will be us this day, we're catching hell. We also, we're going to do what? We're going to what? We're going to, we curse the ground for our sakes now. In sorrow, we're going to eat bread. Watch this. Second as 7 verse 10. We what you got. Second book of Ezra. Ezra 7, verse 10. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 10. And I Wait. said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. Our forefather, now our, our Israel's portion is what? The kingdom of heaven on earth, living forever, ruling forever. Okay? That's Israel's portion. Read. Because for their sakes I made the world. You see that thing? For Israel's sakes, I made the whole earth. The whole planet earth belongs to them. Read. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, mm -hmm. then was decreed that now is done. Then was decreed. He says, but when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. What was decreed? That now we're, gonna, we're not, we're not going to live forever anymore. The most I said, I'm going to cut your lifespan now. And I'm going to cut your lifespan. You're no longer going to live forever. That's what was decreed after Adam transgressed. Okay, read that again. Verse 11. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. Because for their sakes, I made the world. Mm -hmm. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then was decreed that now is done. What was the decree? We're going to read about it right now. Go ahead. Verse 12. Read. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. You see that thing? Full now of the entrance, the, hold on. The entrances of this world now, they are made narrow because of what our forefather Adam did. You understand? They were made narrow. Death entered into the world from the time of Adam all the way unto Moses. This is a similitude. It goes, it goes into what? It goes into the law that was we needed to what we now needed to apply, which is the law of animal sacrifice. And then under Moses, it was reintroduced. So I'm just I'm I'm painting a picture. I'm moving forward, then I'm going backwards. 
Okay, read that again. Verse 12. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 12. Then mm -hmm. were the entrances of this world made narrow. Read. Full of sorrow and travail. Full of what? Full of sorrow and travail. So the entrances of this world that we're living in now is as is what is full of sorrow and travail. We catching hell. So from the time of Adam, our forefathers started to catch hell. Their lifespan started to decrease over time. You understand? Read. They are but few and evil. Come on. Full of perils and very painful. You see that thing? So now, they're not only that, it says, but they are few and evil. Now we have a shorter lifespan now because of the evils that we've done. Because of breaking God's commandments from the time of Adam, now the entrances of this world, they are full of sorrow, travail, they are few and evil, full of perils and very painful. That's why we're catching here from the moment, the moment you wake up from to the time you go to sleep. There's a lot of things that have happened throughout the day. You understand? A lot of things that have, have crossed your mind. Evil things. Okay, right? For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure. Mm -hmm. And brought immortal fruit. You see that thing? It says that because the entrances of the elder world were wide and they were sure. You understand? And brought immortal fruit. We lived forever during that time. You understand? During the time of Adam, we lived forever. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 5. Let's get some examples. Okay? I'm going to show you the lifespan. Genesis 5. Because in Genesis 6, the Mosa is jaking us up. Okay? Genesis chapter 5. Genesis 5 is 25. We're going to use our forefather Methuselah. Okay? Genesis 5, 25. We what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 25. Mm-hmm. And Methuselah lived in 180 and seven years and begat Lamech. You see that thing? It says 100, 180 and 187 years and he begat Lamech. Now jump down to verse 27. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years and he died. So 969 years, that's how long he lived. And then he died. The reason why he died was because of what? Because of what we read in Genesis 3, verse 6 and 7, 10 and 17. You understand? So what we read, what we read in here, yes, they were living longer, but they died. They didn't live forever. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They still died. They didn't live forever. They still died. They lived longer, but they still died. But watch this. Get Genesis 6 now. Okay? Genesis chapter 6. And verse 3. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men. Right? For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. You see that thing? So from 969 years, even those that came after our forefather Methuselah, their lifespan started to be cut short. Now in Genesis 6, it says, listen, your lifespan is going to be 120. But now we don't even get to 120, 120 years. You understand? So when you reach 100, it's like a big thing in the media. When you get 120, it's a huge thing in the media. Okay? Because our lifespan now is cut short from the time of Adam. Okay? So let's go back. Go back to... Um, Go back to 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 13 again. I just gave you an example of the immortal fruit, you understand, that life gave back then as compared to now. Okay, read. 2 book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. They brought immortal fruit because we live forever. We, we were ruling forever. We're dominating the planet Earth. Go ahead. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. You see what he's saying? He says now, now, because remember, verse 14 goes back to verse 12, goes back to verse 11 and 12. Okay. 
So verse 14, it says, if then they that live, labor not to enter these straight things, the, these straight and vain things, meaning the law, statutes and commandments, the pain that we must go through now to, we have to endure the pain and the afflictions and all that. It says, we're not gonna receive the kingdom because back then it was handed over to us on a silver platter. Now we have to labor to get it. Then we didn't labor to get it. It was handed to us. Now we must labor to get it. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to Romans 5. Read Romans 5 verse 14 once again. Okay, I'm painting you a picture of, it says, when it says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. We dealt with when death reigned from the time of our forefather Adam. Okay, read verse 14 again, Romans 5. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. You see what it's saying? It says, um, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Because why? Everybody was affected by what our forefather Adam did. It says, who is the figure of him that was to come? That's why I said, I mentioned that it was what presumptuous sin. Now watch this. Let's deal with our forefather Moses. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 15. Deuteronomy 26, verse 15. It says, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Let's deal with that part right there. Okay. Deuteronomy 26, verse 15. Let's read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Look down from thy holy habitation, from heaven, and place thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us, as thou sowest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. You see that thing? So the, the, the Moses is praying that the most I be able to bless his people Israel. You understand? We be able to get the land that floweth with milk and honey, which is what? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay, go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgment. Thou, thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So now the condition for verse 15 is verse 16, that we must keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes and the judgment that we may be able to do what? To receive and inherit the land that flows with milk and honey, verse 15. Go ahead. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. So now, when it says, thou hast avouched, thou, thou hast avouched the, the Lord this day to be thy God. Avouched. Let's get the definition of avouched. Because that's not a regular Negro way. So let's get some definitions here. Okay. Okay, read that. Read the definition of avouched. Avouch. Because a vouch is basically now today is called a voyage, which is the same thing. Now read that. What does a voyage mean? The definition to declare as a matter of fact or as a thing that can be proved. You see that thing? It says to declare as a matter of fact a thing that can be proved. That's heavy right there. That's beautiful. Read it again. The definition of a voyage, the definition to declare as a matter of fact or as a thing that can be proved. Okay, affirm, affirm. You see what it means? Now read the verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 17. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. So now we have avouched the, our, we have avouched the Lord this day to be our God. Meaning how? How did we avouch? How did we affirm to the Lord? We said, we're going to walk in his ways. We're going to keep his statutes. We're going to keep his commandments and his judgment and to hearken unto his voice. We made an oath to the Lord in order for us to receive the promises that are written in verse 15, go ahead. 
And the Lord had avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. Now the Lord also did the same to us. He avouched us to be what? To be, to be his peculiar people. Based on what? Based on what we have said. We said we're going to do. All these laws that you have said, Lord, through Moses, we will do and be obedient. That's the same thing we read in Exodus 24. Go ahead. As he had promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. We must keep all his laws. Go ahead. And to make thee high above all nations which he had made in praise and in name and mm. in honor. Come and on. that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God as he had spoken. Now that's heavy. Right? You see verse 19? Verse 19 is a heavy verse. It says to make thee high above all nations which he had made. Now he's going to tell us how he's going to make us high. It says in praise, meaning we, were, we are going to be praised on this earth. You understand? It says, and in name, our name is going to be reverenced on this earth. Okay? And in honor, we are going to be honored on this earth. Our children, they will be called by their names. You understand? They are true names that the Lord gave unto them. The nations will know our children by name. Understand that. It says that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God as he has as he has spoken. So now what we're reading here, these are the conditions for verse 15. You understand? So verse 15 and verse 19, they go hand in hand. 16 and 18, 16 through 18, they go hand in hand. These are the conditions for verse 15 and 19 to come together. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, so now watch this. Now give me Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 26, verse, um, verse 16 through 18. These are the conditions for verse 15 and 19, okay? Deuteronomy 11, 21, watch this. We're still dealing with when Moses came into the picture because Moses taught us the law, you understand? And he gave us conditions for keeping these laws. He gave us the conditions, you understand, for receiving the blessings, and the conditions, if we don't, we don't obey the laws that was given unto us, we're gonna be we're gonna be cursed, we're gonna be judged, we're gonna be in slavery, captivity, we're gonna be the bottom of all nations on earth. Okay, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Read uh Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Read that for me. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children. In the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. You notice the word that is being used there. It says that your days may be multiplied. Remember, when our forefather Adam was given the, the kingdom, our days was multiplied by like that, by default. We live forever. You understand? So now we're given another condition. You understand? The same way our forefather Adam was given conditions, he says, you keep these laws, you understand? You're going to rule forever. Now, during the time of our forefather Moses, when we came out of Egypt, the same thing is happening again. The Lord is giving us another chance what? for us to taste the kingdom. Okay? He says that your days may be multiplied. Because in Genesis 6, our days were no longer multiplied. They were being shortened. The Lord started to subtract here he's not saying add, he says multiply. So he's gonna add, it will multiply our days, meaning living forever. Okay, read verse 21 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 21. Go ahead. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, and the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the mm -hmm. days of heaven upon the earth. You see that being the kingdom of heaven on earth, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Okay. Um, jump down to verse 25. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 25. Mm -hmm. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that he shall tread upon as he had said unto you. So what we're reading here is the most High God is using Moses to tell us, listen, no nation will be able to stand before you if you keep these laws. I'm going to put the fear of you upon these nations. I'm going to put the dread of you upon these nations that the nations will know these, these people right here, they are the most high God is with them. 
the Lord is fighting for them. Just like our, just like uh, Rahab did. Because Rahab was like, listen, the Lord is with you because now the fear of you is upon all these nations. Right now, the nations don't fear us. Right now, the nations disrespect us. Right now, the nations dishonor us because why? We are not in this Bible as a nation. That, but now the Lord has mercy upon us that we may return him back to this book. You understand? So our days may be multiplied. Now watch this. Jump up. Read verse 22 now. Okay. I'm going to show you the conditions here. Watch this. Read verse 22. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 11 verse 22. Mm -hmm. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love mm -hmm. the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. That's the condition. That's the same thing we read in Deuteronomy 26, verse 16. You understand? Through 18. The Lord is saying, listen, if you diligently keep all these laws, okay, to love the Lord your God, read on. And to cleave on, verse 23. unto him, mm -hmm. then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. And ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. You see what he's saying? We're going to possess greater and mightier nations than ourselves. So, God, because these nations, they are mightier than us right now because they're ruling over us. Okay? Read on. Read verse 23 again. Deuteronomy 11, verse 23. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 23. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So well, that's a promise right there, based on verse 21, based on verse 22. Okay, come on. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Mm -hmm. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. You see that thing? So now it says from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates. So it's giving us the landmass of the kingdom of heaven on earth, the capital, which is Jerusalem, the glory of all lands. So the most High God is giving us another chance here to get the kingdom. You understand? But there's conditions to receive this kingdom. Understand that? The same conditions that was given to our forefather Adam, but our forefather Adam was given what? He was given a command. He was given the kingdom. He was given the laws to govern that kingdom. When he broke those laws, he's what? He lost the kingdom. You understand? So now the Lord is giving us another chance. He's reintroducing the laws to us. You understand? And give us another chance to get the kingdom. Okay? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Read. Right? That I have set before you life and death, mm -hmm. blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see that thing? So he says, I'm going to record this day against you. Choose life, you understand, that both thou and thy seed may live, that just the days of your, that the, the, your days may be multiplied and the days of your children upon the land where I'm going to give you. If you obey these laws, what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21 and 22, that's the same thing here. He says, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that your days may be multiplied as the days of heaven upon the earth. So, but when we chose, when we chose life, we entered into the kingdom, right? When during the time of King David and King Solomon, but we broke those laws because we decided we we're going to choose death and the curse was upon us. And we're still under the same case unto this day. Understand that? You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. Give me, give me Daniel 9 verse 11. I'm going to show you something here. Okay. Pay close attention. Daniel 9 verse 11. Read what you got. Some of you are going to get it. Some of you will not. Give me Daniel 9 verse 11. Read that. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Mm-hmm. Yay. All Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The what? Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. 
Therefore, the curse is brought upon us. Why? Because of the transgression of God's laws. We transgress God's commandments, so the curse is brought upon us, like we read in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Go ahead. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Because we have sinned against the Most High God. Read on. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, mm -hmm. by bringing upon us a great evil. A great evil. This great evil is Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Okay, come on. For under the whole heaven has not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. You see that thing? Under the whole heaven. Because now this great evil, remember, the most High God kept give, giving us a chance to get our minds right. And we did not. We lost the kingdom during the time of our forefather Adam. And we lost the kingdom during the time of King David and King Solomon. Now we ended up in slavery. We've been in slavery ever since. You understand? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Pay close attention. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 3. Okay? I'm going to show you something here. Genesis chapter 3. Read verse 21. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get there, give me the book of wisdom of Solomon 10. I'm going to explain it like this. Pay close attention. Okay? Genesis, um, wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first formed father of the world that was created alone mm -hmm. and brought him out of his fall. And did what? And brought him out of his fall. And brought Adam out of his fall. Remember that she is wisdom that preserved the first formed father of the world that was created alone. Adam was a God on earth and brought him out of his fall. When did Adam fall? When he listened to his wife Eve, and the Lord brought Adam out of his fall. How did that happen? And when? Get that in Genesis 3 now. Genesis 3, verse 21. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. Let's put the pieces together. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. You see that thing? And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. These coats of skins, they come from where? Animals. These are the coats of skins of animals. So what was introduced here? The law of animal sacrifice was introduced. The law of animal sacrifice was introduced. You understand? All this. Give me Romans 5. Romans chapter 5, read verse 13 now. Watch this. Romans chapter 5, verse 13. We're coming back here. Okay. The book of Romans verse chapter 13. 5, verse 13. Go ahead. For until the law, sin was in the world. Mm -hmm. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. He says sin is not imputed when there is no law. Meaning what? Before, before they sin. There was no laws really in, in terms of what? There was no laws that there was breaking because they were not in the midst of sin. So there were no laws that there was breaking because they were not sinning. You understand? So there was no, there was no need for atonement for sins because they knew, what they, well, they knew what they were supposed to do. They only knew how to do right until our foremother Eve gave place to the devil. You understand? Then atonement was introduced. How atonement was introduced was the coat of skin to clothe them, meaning what? To bring atonement for their sin that they committed. That's why it says he was brought out of his fall because the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. Now read the verse again, verse 13. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 5, verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. Mm -hmm. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Sin will not be imposed if there's no law. Now watch this. So here, meaning the law will not be imposed if there's no sin. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. He says, because until the law, sin was in the world. You understand? Meaning, until the law, sin was introduced. Because why? When sin was introduced, that's when the law was brought forth. What law? Go back to Genesis 3, verse 21 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 21. Mm-hmm. 
And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. The coats of skin is how they atone for their sins. Now, the proof of that is Genesis 4. Get Genesis chapter 4, okay, verse 3. Genesis 4, verse 3. The proof of that is in Genesis 4 with Adam and Eve and the kids. Okay, watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So Cain is bringing an offering of fruits and veggies, which is not what the Lord wants, right? And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see that thing? The Lord had respect unto our forefather Abel's offering because why? He, he brought the, he says what? He says, uh, he brought the firstlings of his flock and they fed the wolf. So he did what the parents taught him. So he, he applied Exodus 20 verse 12. He applied that there. He applied the fifth commandment. So Cain didn't go that route. He decided to do his own thing. But what I'm showing here is in Genesis 3, 21, how Adam was brought out of his fall, him and his wife, is when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. The proof of that is in Genesis 4, verse 3 and 4, when Abel and Cain had to sacrifice, and Abel brought the right offering, and Cain did not. Okay? So this is how, this is, that's what it means when it says, after the similitude of Adam, because what was introduced? The law of animal sacrifice. During the time of Moses, what happened? Get Exodus now. You know what? Hmm, do I want to go to Hebrew? Yeah, get, get Exodus 24. Let's get it. Give me Exodus 24 now. Read verse 6. You know what? Start at verse 5. Exodus 24, verse 5. Let's read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 5. Go ahead. And he said, and he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So now what's happening here is what? The law of animal sacrifice. You understand? For atonement of sins. Right? And Moses took half of the blood and put mm -hmm. it in basins. Mm -hmm. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He sprinkled half of the blood on the altar. Okay. Some he put it in basins. Go ahead. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord had said we will we, we, we do and be obedient. He says that all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. All that the Lord has said we will, will we do and be obedient. So what are they doing? They are making an oath. You see, Israel is fond of doing stuff like that. They're making an oath. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and mm -hmm. said, Behold the blood of the covenant. The what? Behold the blood of the covenant. Behold the blood of the covenant that we read in verse 7. The book of the covenant, because what was in the covenant? The laws of God, the commandments, and the judgments for breaking these laws. You understand? How to receive atonement for your sins. He says, behold, the blood of the covenant. Go ahead. Which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Concerning all the words of the law that are written. Now, the Lord has enjoined the blood of the covenant unto you. So you must understand that this is a blood oath. You understand? It's not without blood. It is without, it is with blood. Now watch this. Hmm. Give me, give me the book. Go back, go back to Romans 5. Let me go there. Let's go there again. Romans chapter 5. Okay, Romans chapter 5, read verse 14 again. The book of Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Right? Even over them that had, that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. After the what? After the similitude of Adam's transgression. Because the question is, how did... Adam, how was Adam brought out of his fall? Go back to the wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Let's see how Adam was brought out of his fall. Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. 
she preserved the first formed father of the world. Wait. That was created alone uh -huh. and brought him out of his fall. He was brought out of his fall. How? Because the Lord clothed them with the coats of skins, meaning what? The blood of the animal had to be spilled so that they can receive atonement for their sins. They, what they was taught, they taught that to their, to their children, uh, Cain and Abel. They did that. You understand? So now, what we, what we just read in Exodus 24 is the same thing that was taught to our forefathers and foremothers in the wilderness by Moses. You understand? That we must receive atonement through what? Through blood. The, 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 the blood of the bulls and the goats. You understand? So we can receive atonement. Now, yes, says, um, from nevertheless, death reigned from Aram to Moses, right? Okay. He says, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Aram's transgression. Because when Aram sinned, how was he brought out of his fall? He was given what? The law of animal sacrifice was introduced to him. When we sin under Moses, what was, in, what was given to us? The law of animal sacrifice. The details of the law of animal sacrifice was retaught to us. You understand? We're by Moses. Hmm. Go back to Exodus 24. I want to go back there. Okay. You know what? Let's just catch it in Hebrew. Okay. Let's catch it in Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 9. Read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19. Watch this. Start verse 18. Hebrews 9, verse 18. I'm going to show you something here this day. Pay close attention. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18. Uh-huh. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You were, you, it was what? Was dedicated without blood. So the first covenant was dedicated with, it was, it was neither was, he says, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. It was dedicated with blood. The blood of bulls and goats that we read in Exodus 24. Go ahead. For when Moses had spoken every precept, every precept to all the people according to the law, mm -hmm. he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. He did what? And sprinkled both the book and all the people. He sprinkled both the book and all the people. You understand? What did he say? Go ahead. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. You see that thing? This is the blood of the testament. Go ahead. Meaning the old testament, the old covenant. Go ahead. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Because they all had to be sanctified. They all had to be sanctified by what? By the blood of calves and the blood of goats and the blood of bulls and so forth. You understand? They all had to be sanctified with blood. Not only the book, not only the people, but also the things that pertain to the what? The ministry, the sanctuary. Everything had to be sanctified by the blood. You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. Go back to Romans now. Read Romans 5 verse 14 one more again. Romans 5 verse 14. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 14. Oh, come on. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Uh -huh. Who is the figure of him that was to come? You see that thing? So Adam's transgression was the similitude of the figure of him that was to come. Now, watch this. Give me First Corinthians real quick. First Corinthians chapter 15, okay? Give me First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's read verse, read, read, read verse, hmm, read verse 42. You know what? Start verse 45. We just gonna, um, Get to the point, okay? If you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, shame on you. You get it next year. Don't worry about it, okay? Read that. Second, First Corinthians fifteen verse forty-five. Read that for me, okay? First Come book on. of Corinthians, chapter four, fifteen, verse forty-five. Go ahead. And so it is written, 
Mm. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Read that apart again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He was what? Was made a living soul. Because that's what we read in Genesis 2, verse 7. It was breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We read it earlier in Genesis 2, verse 7. We read it earlier in 2 Ezra 3, verse 4 and 5. Go ahead. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. I need you to read verse 45 once again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. Uh -huh. And so it is written, the mm. first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Read. The last Adam was the made what? a quickening. The last Adam. The what? The last Adam. The last Adam, the last Adam, the last Adam, go ahead. Was made a quickening spirit. Was made a quickening spirit. Was made a quickening spirit. All this, give me second Ezra chapter three. Second Ezra three verse 21. Let's read that. Second book of Ezra chapter three verse 21. Hmm. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed. Why is he saying the first, the first, the first Adam? Read that part again. <laughs> oh, pray. this Bible is beautiful, man. Read verse 21 again. Come on. Second book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 21. Come on. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed. The first Adam, who was bearing a wicked heart, transgressed because what was the wicked heart he committed a presumptuous sin go ahead and was overcome mm -hmm. and so be all they that are born of him and those that are born of adam they also guess what they are bearing a wicked heart just like what adam did you understand it affected all of us now go back to first corinthians 15 read verse 45 again first book of corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Was made a living soul. He was given the laws, you understand, to become a living soul. He was given God's commandments. When he transgressed, he was brought out of his fall. How? Because the Lord introduced the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? So in order for them to receive atonement, blood had to be spilled. Go ahead. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam, how is he going to be made? A, how is the last Adam going to be made a quickening spirit? Hmm. What's this? Hold this. Let's go back to Romans 5. I want you to understand this verse. Because you, if you understand Romans 5 verse 14, 18 will be easy to understand. Romans 5 verse 14 once again. Okay. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Mm -hmm. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Who is the figure of him that was to come? Remember what Adam did. Adam, it says he was a what? He was a, he was a living, he was, he was made a living soul. But the first Adam, the last Adam, guess what? He's made a quickening spirit. So the, Adam's, uh, uh, the first Adam, guess what? His transgression was a similitude of the figure of the last Adam who is to come. Everybody get that so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So now watch this. How was he going to be a quickening spirit? Give me the book of Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 52 verse 14. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 14. Mm -hmm. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, Come on. and is far more than the sons of man. So let's talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He says, 
as many as was astonished at thee, is as his visage, meaning his face, was so marked more than any man, meaning he was disfigured that you couldn't recognize what he was. You couldn't recognize where the nose was, where the eye was, where the mouth was. That's how they disfigured his face when they crucified him. So Isaiah is prophesying about how Christ is going to be crucified and what he's going to look like when he's crucified. You understand? I Meaning he's going to be gruesome. Okay, go ahead. So shall he sprinkle many nations. He shall what? So shall he sprinkle many nations. So shall he sprinkle many nations. So shall he sprinkle many nations. He will sprinkle many nations. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. Mm -hmm. For that which had not been, for that which had not been told them, shall they see. That which had not been told them, shall they see. Meaning they're going to see what, they're going to see when he sprinkled many nations, they're going to see what the nation of Israel, they are going to be given a chance to repent and get the kingdom. So that's why it says, that which had not been told them, shall they see. They're going to see what Isaiah is prophesying about. They're going to see it in the future. Go ahead. And that which they had not heard, shall they consider. Because the prophets will be bringing it out also in these last days to bring to their remembrance what happened back then. Why Christ came. You understand? The last Adam, which will be made a quickening spirit. But the way he's going to quicken us is going to be through his blood. That's how he's going to sprinkle many nations. The Moses sprinkled many nations when we were in the wilderness. You understand? Our forefather Adam sprinkled, the Lord sprinkled Adam and Eve during the time when they sinned. And the children were also able to what to be sprinkled by the blood of bulls and goats. Moses did the same thing. But this last Adam, he's going to be what? He's going to be a quickening spirit. But the way he's going to do it, he's going to do it through his blood. That's why he's going to be made a quickening spirit. I hope you men understand. I hope you men understand that thing. So when you teach, you don't get confused. Okay, now watch this. Um, give me, give me the book of room. Give me Hebrews now, real quick. Give me Hebrews, okay? Give me Hebrews 9. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. We're just gonna get to the point. You know what? Hmm. Hebrews 9, verse 11. I'm gonna show you something. You know what? Give me Hebrews 10, verse 1. Hmm. Don't forget what we read in Romans 5 verse 14 now. Don't forget that. Okay, Hebrews 10 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Right. And not the very image of the things. Come on. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the corners they, they unto perfect. They come as they unto perfect, meaning those that attended to perform the sacrifices for the people. So it says, can never with those sacrifices, the law having a shadow of good things to come. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. When was it introduced? Go back to Romans chapter 5, verse 14 again. Okay, go back there. Romans 5, verse 14. Watch this. Hmm. Romans 5, verse 14. Let's go back there. Okay, read that thing for me again. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Stop right there. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. You understand? From Adam to Moses. From Adam to Moses. So go back to Hebrews 10, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Stop right there. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. From what time? From the time of Adam to Moses. From the time of Adam to Moses. Guess what? The law having had a shadow of good things to come. From the time of Adam and Moses, the law had a shadow of good things to come. What are those? What was the, what was the good things that was going to come? Give me Hebrews 9 verse 11 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. Go ahead. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. You see that thing? Christ being come and what? And high priest of good things to come. From the time of Adam and Moses, Christ was already what? Was already prophesied for to come. So what happened during the time of Genesis with our forefather Adam, what happened in the wilderness with Moses when 
he reintroduced the law of animal sacrifice and towards the commandments. Guess what? That was a shadow of the high priest, which was the what? The good things to come. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Come on. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. You see that thing? By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Perfect, perfect, more perfect than the one that Adam and Eve had. You understand? And those that came after, after them. Than the one that, that Moses had in the wilderness. You understand? By a more greater and more perfect tabernacle. Read. Not made with hands. Mm -hmm. That is to say, not of this building. Of that building, because the temple was standing at that time. Go ahead. Verse 12. Read. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, mm -hmm. but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained the eternal redemption for us. Having obtained eternal re redemption for us. Because remember, it says, um, the last Adam will be a quickening spirit. Okay. Now jump down to verse 14. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? Mm -hmm. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You know what? Read verse 13. I'm going to show you something. Pay close attention. Read verse 13. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. Come on. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean. Doing what? Sprinkling the unclean. So the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean. Who was the unclean? That was us. We needed to be sanctified by the blood of bulls and of goats. From the time of Adam, you understand, all the way up to Moses. So now the Apostle Paul is explaining from that time of Adam unto Moses. Guess what? This is how we were what? That's how we were sprinkled to what? To remove uncleanness from us, to sanctify us so we may receive atonement. Go ahead. Sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. You see that thing? The blood of, go the blood of bulls and of goats was to sanctify to the purifying of the flesh. Read on. He's letting you know right there. I need you to understand. It says, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Pay close attention. The flesh. The flesh. Hmm. All this. Go back to 1 Corinthians. I want to show you something. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Read verse 46 now. Watch this. First book of Corinthians chapter, four, chapter 15 verse 46. Mm-hmm. How be it, that was not first, which is spiritual. That was not but first, that. which, hold on, is as however, that was not first, which is spiritual, meaning that what, meaning the first Adam was not spiritual. You see that thing? He says the first Adam wasn't spiritual. Go ahead. But that which was natural. But that which was natural. But that which was natural. You understand? Purifying to the purifying of the flesh. You see that thing? Go ahead. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The second Adam is spiritual. That's why it says quickening our spirit. The last Adam will be what? Will deal with the conscience. The last Adam will deal with your conscience. When the first Adam dealt with the flesh, the last Adam will deal with your conscience. But the first Adam, from the time of Adam unto Moses, that was the schoolmaster. The schoolmaster didn't start during the time of Moses. No, he started from the time of Adam. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Hebrews 9. Okay. The book of Hebrews is 19. Come on. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. You see that thing? Sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, that which is natural. That which is natural. Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Stop right there. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, the Messiah, the one we read about in Isaiah 52, verse 14 and 15, who through the eternal spirit, because he's going to deal with your spirit, 
You understand? He has offered himself without spot to God. Go ahead. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purge your conscience, meaning what? Purify your conscience. That's what it means. Purge your conscience from dead works. What was the dead works? The dead works is the law of animal sacrifice, which was the blood, the blood of bulls and of goats. So when it says purge your conscience from dead works, the conscience goes into what? Your spirit. You understand? Go back to go back to First Corinthians again. Okay, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse forty-six. Once again, okay. First book of Corinthians. Read forty-five through forty-seven. Read forty-five through forty-seven. Hold on, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Read verse 44. We're gonna read down. Read it slow, read it slow. Okay. I need everybody to understand what's coming out here. Read. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 44. Come on. It is sown a natural body. It is sown a natural body because that's from the time of Adam. Go ahead. It is raised a spiritual body. It's raised a spiritual body that goes into Christ. Read. There is a natural body uh -huh. and there is a spiritual body. So from the time of Adam to Moses, that was the representation of what? The natural body. Okay, go ahead. The schoolmaster, read. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He was made a living soul, go ahead. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. He was made a quickening spirit. What did he quicken? Our minds, our conscience, to purify us spiritually. You understand? To purify us spiritually, to deal with our conscience. The first Adam didn't do that from the time of Adam and Moses. The last Adam, though, that's what he's going to do. He's going to purify what? Not the flesh, but your conscience, okay, from dead works. Read. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, mm -hmm. but that which is natural. But that which is natural, go ahead. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Afterward, that which is spiritual, which is the last Adam. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth, earthy. That goes into Adam, read. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Boom. You see that part right there? Read verse 47 once again. Hmm. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 47. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth, earthy. Mm -hmm. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You see that thing? Then the second man, it says the second man is the Lord from heaven. That quickening spirit, the black Messiah. So go back to Hebrews 9 now. Hebrews 9, let's read verse 15. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, from the time of Adam, you understand, unto Moses. You understand, to redeem those that were under the what? The first testament, which was dedicated with blood, you understand, from the time of Adam unto Moses. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying in Romans 5.14. Go ahead. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that thing? They might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That's why in verse 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. You see that? He's saying the same thing. Go ahead. For where a testament is, there must also a necessity be the death of the testator. You see that thing? For where a testament is, which is now the New Testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Because Christ died to necessitate the New Testament. Christ died to necessitate the New Testament. The Old Testament was not without blood. So is the New Testament because the New Testament to be ushered in, Christ had to die. You understand? Christ had to die for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. For a testament is of force after men are dead. 
meaning the testament, this, the testament for it to be fully established is as what is going to have full impact, is going to have power after men are dead because Christ died, right? Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Meaning what? Because he can change his mind. That's why after Christ died, what did he do? He went back to the Father, lest he be corrupted by the evils of this world. That's why when he returned, he's not going to return. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. All this, give me Isaiah 47 real quick. Isaiah 47 verse 3. I'll just explain it like this. Okay. Isaiah 47. Read verse 3 for me. Okay. This is now when the Lord returns. Okay, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, come on. thy shame shall be seen. Thy shame shall be seen. They talk about Babylon, America. Go ahead. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. That's it right there. I will not meet thee as a man. What does it mean? Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. So we understand what Isaiah is saying here. He says, I will not meet thee as a man. What does he mean? Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 47. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 47. Come on. The first man is of the earth, earthy. Mm -hmm. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You see that thing? So when he says, I'm not going to meet, I will not meet thee as a man. How is he going to meet him? How is gonna, how is he going to come into this earth? He's going to come with power and great glory. He's going to come as a spiritual man, meaning with all power of the most high God upon him. You understand? He's going to be a supernatural being in full effect when he comes on this earth. That's why it says, I'm not going to meet you as a man. I'm not going to meet you as a natural man. Like when I was, when I was crucified for the 12 tribes of my, for the 12 tribes of Israel. But this time when I come, I'm not going to meet you as a man. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to Romans now, chapter 5, verse 14. Let's read that once again. Okay? Romans 5, verse 14. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Who's that? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, the last Adam. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Revelation, okay? Give me Revelations too. Hmm. You know what? Because, you know, my Bible, you know, it's, it's not visible anymore. So, okay, I'm going to use this. Give me Revelation 1 verse 8. Let's read that. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. I am Alpha and Omega. Read it again. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega. I am what? I am Alpha and Omega. I am what? I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The beginning and the ending. Stop right there. The beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending. The first Adam and the last Adam. Keep going. Say the Lord, mm -hmm. which is and uh -huh. which was come and on. which is to come. The Almighty. Boom. That's it right there. Go back to Romans 5. You get it. You get it. You get it. You get it. You don't shame on me. Let's go back now. Give me Romans 5 now. Verse 14, then we're going to jump down to 18. Okay, read that for me. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, mm -hmm. even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Come Who on. is the figure of him that was to come? Alpha and Omega. Jump down to verse 18. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So this verse right here, this, big, this first precept in this verse, it explains verse 14 and verse 12 and verse 13 all together. Go ahead. 
even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. He says, he said, even so, meaning the same way when death came into the world by one, he says, the same way righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You understand? Give me Acts 2, 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Read. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? It says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, because he shall sprinkle many people. You understand? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of understanding this book before the Lord returns. The true gospel of Christ. You understand? So that gift is the understanding of scripture. What does it mean to repent? How to get yourself together? How to put the pieces of the puzzle together when you keep God's commandments? I need you men to understand. You will never be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together if you don't keep God's commandments. You will never be able to understand how the, when the pieces are put together, you will never understand this book if, if you don't keep God's commandments. It doesn't matter how many classes will come out. You understand? Whether we're dealing with the milk, whether we're dealing with the meat, you are not going to understand if secretly you are breaking God's commandments. You'll always be confused all the time. It's a fact. So don't get it twisted. Okay? Read it again, verse 38. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. Right. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the gift right there that we're reading about in Romans 5, verse 18. So go back, Romans 5, verse 18 again. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You see that part right there when it says all men to condemnation, meaning there was what? There was condemnation. You sin, you die. So now it says Christ, the righteousness that is coming through Christ, you understand? It says what? It says, it says came upon all men unto the justification of life all men unto the justification of life. This verse right here, this last part of this verse is what Christians used to say. You see, it says all men. The key word here is justification of life. That's the key right there. Justification of life. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 45. Okay. Isaiah 45, the last verse. Isaiah 45, verse 25. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 25. Mm -hmm. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. We're going you know, to receive the glory of the kingdom. It says, in the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified. We're going to receive justification through what? Through the blood of Christ. When we keep the commandments in, or, or, we keep the commandments in the faith of Christ, that's how we are going to receive justification under Christ. Why is the Apostle Paul saying this when he says, come upon all men unto justification of life? Because all is the all men is all the seed of Israel in Isaiah. So you men write that down and understand that. Because a Christian while you teach will pull this on you. You understand? That's why it says unto all men unto just, just justification of life is talking about who? The 12 tribes of Israel all the seed of Israel be, they are going to be justified by what? By the blood of Christ. You understand? The proof of that, give me that in Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Acts 13, verse 38. Here's an example right here. You understand? It says, we shall be justified because remember, it says condemnation because under Moses, there was condemnation. 
Under Aram, there was condemnation because that's when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. So now under Christ, there's justification from all things that could not be justified under the law of Moses. Now read that. Acts 13 verse 38. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13 verse 38. Read. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, Mm -hmm. that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. This man is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Go ahead. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. Stop right there. And by him, all that believe, meaning all the seed of Israel in Isaiah 45 verse 25, shall, he says, are justified from all things. He's going to tell you what those all things are. He's going to give you clues here. Go ahead from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. By from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Because under Moses, there was the, you what? We were under the law of sin and death. You sinned, you broke the Sabbath, you were put to death. You committed adultery, you were put to death. You understand? Bestiality, okay? You were put to death, as an example. So we could not be justified from all things, but under Christ, we are justified from all things that we could wish we could not be justified under Moses. Give me that in Leviticus 20 verse 10 real quick. Let's get some examples. Leviticus 20 and verse 10. Okay. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. Come on. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, really? the adulterer and, and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. You see that thing? So the man that commits adultery with another man's wife, you understand? And he commits adultery, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer, which is the man, the adulteress, which is the woman, shall surely be put to death. This is the law of sin and death. Keep reading. Go ahead. And the man that lied with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Mm -hmm. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Come on. Their blood shall be upon them. You see that thing? Their blood, their blood shall be upon them. You understand? So there was blood. The blood that needed to be spilled was theirs. Not the animal's blood, but their blood. You see that thing? Hmm. There's some heavy stuff in that thing. Okay, but I'm not going to touch it this day. Let's go back. Go back to Acts 13, verse 38. Read verse 39 again. Acts 13, verse 39. Okay? The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 39. Read. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. Mm -hmm. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Which by, he says that, you see that? He says, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So now when Christ came, go back to Romans 5, verse 18 now again. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So he's letting you know, he's taking you all the way back to Genesis from our forefather Adam. That's why he says, therefore, as by the offense of one, who's that? Our forefather Adam. Judgment came upon all men to condemnation, the law of sin and death. Even so, meaning the same way, by the righteousness of one, who's that? Christ a lamb without blemish, okay? The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Who's the all men? All the seed of Israel that shall be justified in Isaiah 45, verse 25. You men and women understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all praises to the most high. So I need you, you brothers and sisters, especially you brothers, to understand what this verse is saying. You understand? There's a Lord in it. So don't, and don't sleep on this thing. Watch this. Give me the book of, give me the book of Psalms real quick. Give me Psalms. I'm almost done. Okay. Give me Psalms chapter 40. 
Okay, Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. Watch this. Watch this. Mm. Start of verse 6. I'm going to show you something this day. Watch this. Pay close attention. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 6. Go ahead. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. You see that thing? So he's talking about the law of animal sacrifice. The law of animal sacrifice, the law of sin and death, the law of condemnation. You understand? You sin, you die. So what is this making reference to? From the time of what Adam? You understand? But I wanted you to see the next verse. Because what we're reading here right here, I'm going to show you where it's written. All this, let's go back to Romans 5. I'm going to show you with this verse. Go back to Romans 5, verse 18 again. I'm going to show you saying the same thing. Watch this. Come on. Romans 5, verse 4, verse 18. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Great. Right. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Stop right there. So, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. That's what we just read in Psalms 40, verse 6. The law of animal sacrifice. So go back to Psalms 40 now. Read verse 7. Book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is Read. written of me. He says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Go back to Romans 5. Read verse 18 now. I'm going to show you something. here. You know what? Read verse Romans. 14. Read verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 14. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, over the similitude mm -hmm. of Adam's transgression. The similitude of Adam's transgression, because Adam sinned. Okay? Watch this. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Who is the what? Who is the figure of him that was to come? Who is the figure of him that was to come? I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. He's saying the same thing right there. Who is the figure of him that was to come? He came in the volume of the book from the time of Adam until this day. Go back, jump down to verse 18. I'm going to show you. Who is the figure of him that was to come? He's saying the same thing with what we're about to read. Read verse 18 now in Romans chapter 5. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to, condemn to condemnation. Right. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You see that thing? Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, which is through Jesus Christ's blood, came upon all men unto justification of life. What does that mean? Who well, because he what? He was the figure of him that was to come. He is the figure that was to come. To what? To bring justification of life to the 12 tribes of Israel. When he bring justification unto life, what did he do? Go back to Psalms now. Read 40 verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 verse 8. Mm -hmm. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yay. Pray. Thy law is, is within my heart. Thy law is what? Thy law is within my heart. To purge what? To purge your conscience from dead works. Thy law is within my heart. To do what? To purge your conscience from dead works. To receive justification of life. How? Your, the laws of God will be in your mind. To purge your conscience from dead works. Go back to Hebrews now. We're going to close it right here. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 once again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Uh -huh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Read. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that thing? I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea. Thy law is within my heart. Why? 
so that your conscience may be purged from dead works. What is the dead works now? Sin. Sin. Sin is the dead works. How we purge our conscience? The laws must be in our mind. We serve the laws of God with our minds. Our thoughts must be disciplined in God's laws. That's what he's saying right there. That's what he's saying. When he says, I come in the volume of the book, is deeper than what you may think. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's break bread. Okay? I don't want to go any further with this. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh dam damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.